Hello everyone, welcome back to study room. In this video, we will be studying about animal hormones. Animal hormones are basically the chemical messengers that are present in the endocrine system, which helps in controlling and coordinating our body. So, this is the second way by which our body is controlled and coordinated. The endocrine system is a series of glands that use information carried by the nervous system to help regulate the body's processes. Thanks to this neural condition, endocrine glands such as thyroid are aware of the amount of hormones and other chemicals they need to produce. These chemicals are then distributed throughout the now, endocrine system is a second way of control and coordination in our body, as I already said. And the following glands that are here presented here are part of the endocrine system. So these release, these glands actually release various hormones. Okay. So what are the glands that are present here? The first is adrenal, then we have the thymus, then we have the testis, then the ovary, pancreas, and thyroid. Also, we have the um, glands that are present in the brain like hypothalamus, pineal gland and pituitary gland. Right. Next we'll be talking about the hormones. Hormones are basically the chemical messengers of the endocrine system. These hormones are the signals which adjust the body's internal body together with the nervous system. So chemical signals in the form of hormones can be sent to the target organs in the endocrine system. And these are uh, these hormones are directly secreted into the blood. There are no special ducts for these hormones. They are directly secreted into the blood, and uh, uh, it, uh, these hormones travel through the blood and then reach the target organs, and then they become activated there and work there uh, to uh, you know to uh, regulate the working of the target organ. Okay, so these are basically the chemical messengers that are transported by blood from the endocrine gland to the target organ. Now we'll be talking about the first gland that we have that is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is a small central region of the human brain, it plays an important role in the release of many hormones. So for the release of uh, many hormones, hypothalamus actually gives the commands for the release of these hormones. Okay. So, for example, when the level of growth hormone is low, the hypothalamus releases growth hormone releasing factor, which stimulates the pituitary gland to release growth hormone. So, hypothalamus is basically um, a small organ that helps in the regulation of the secretion of the hormones. So, this is a very important um, part uh, of the body. Uh, of the endocrine system that helps in the regulation of the system. Now talking about the hormones, the first hormone that we have is growth hormone. So growth hormone is produced by pituitary gland. Adrenal hormone regulates growth and development of the body. Okay. Now the first hormone that we will be discussing about is the growth hormone. Growth hormone is produced by pituitary gland. Okay, it's produced by the pituitary gland and it regulates the growth and development of the body. So this is the function of the growth hormone. The deficiency of these uh, hormones actually produces diseases, and the deficiency of growth hormone leads to dwarfism or very short people. Okay, and the excess of growth hormone leads to gigantism, which is very tall. So here you can see a picture that is given. This is the shortest person on earth and this is the tallest person on earth. This is Chandra Bahadur from Nepal who is the shortest person on earth and has dwarfism which is a deficiency of the growth hormone. And this person Sultan Hussein who is from Turkey, uh, he has excess of his growth hormone in his body and therefore he has a disease that is known as, he has a condition that is known as gigantism. Okay. So these uh, these two people they have the uh, disorders of growth hormone, right? The next hormone that we'll be discussing is thyroxine hormone. Thyroxine hormone is produced by thyroxine gland. Thyroxine regulates metabolism and lack of it may cause goiter disease. So lack of thyroxine hormone actually causes goiter disease. So here we can see uh, this is a normal thyroid gland, and when there's uh, 
goiter disease and the thyroid gland becomes inflamed and this looks like this so thyroid gland is basically present here in the neck region okay iodine is a very essential uh, you know it is a very essential component for the production of thyroxine and therefore uh, thyroxine hormone the, for the production for the proper production of the thyroxine hormone we uh, essentially need to take iodine in our diet so that this thyroxine hormone levels are maintained in our body and we are not uh, having a goiter disease right so in order to prevent this condition of goiter disease we need to essentially have iodine in our diet the next hormone that we'll be discussing is insulin insulin is a hormone that is created by the pancreas controls the amount of glucose in body blood stream it regulates body metabolism of carbohydrates fats and proteins and stores glucose in liver fat and muscles so insulin is a hormone that is uh, that is actually secreted by pancreas and it controls the amount of glucose right so this is the function of insulin and this is the uh, endocrine gland from which it is now we have a condition this very very common condition that we uh, see nowadays um, is the condition of type 2 diabetes so what happens in type 2 diabetes is that the body becomes resistant to the effects of insulin and this means that the body needs more insulin to get the same effects therefore doctors prescribe insulin injections so basically when the uh, when the insulin the proper amount of insulin is not able to cope up in the body then this type 2 diabetes is formed in our body and this is a disease that is caused uh, which is related with the regulation of the insulin hormone so type 2 diabetes okay so this is a very very common disease that is uh, seen nowadays in the society the next hormone that we will be discussing is the adrenaline hormone so adrenaline hormone is produced by adrenal glands and adrenaline hormone prepares the body for flight or fight response okay so what is fight and flight response this is a very interesting concept that we need to learn here that when you see a tiger okay so your adrenaline hormone is secreted and you are ready to flight okay your heart beat raises faster and your uh, breathing rate increases right suppose a tiger is just in front of you then what will you think you'll just run right so for running also you your body will produce this adrenaline hormone which is which will help you to flight okay and uh, your heart rate uh, heart uh, will raise faster and your breathing rate will increase your running muscles get more oxygen and that is how you'll be able to run for flight mode okay so this is how you know our adrenaline hormone is very very important in emergency situations such as fight and flight responses it is released by the adrenal glands okay adrenal glands are basically present uh, just above the kidney and that is why since uh, the renal is the word that is related to kidney that is why since it is present uh, just above the kidney it is known as adrenal gland okay adrenal Gland. So you can just remember the name of the gland, adrenal gland, with the help of renal gland. That is present. It is it is located just above the kidney. It has two parts. The outer part is known as the cortex, and the inner part is known as the medulla. Okay. Now we have this testosterone and estrogen hormones. Testosterone is a primary sex hormone in males. You must have studied about this hormone in the sexual reproduction chapter as well or you will be studying about it in the latter chapters and it plays a key role in the development of male reproductive tissues such as testes and prostate as well as promoting sex secondary sexual characteristics such as increased muscle and bone mass and the growth of body hair so testosterone is basically present in the males and the male sex hormone which helps in the production of the reproductive tissues in males and secondary sexual characters in males talking about estrogen estrogen is uh, just a contrary for testosterone uh, testosterone estrogen is the primary sex hormone in females it helps develop and maintain both the reproductive system and female characteristics and sex hormone so this is the male sex hormone male reproductive system and this is the female reproductive system so male reproductive system we have the testosterone which is related to the male reproductive system and we have the 
estrogen which is related to the female uh, reproductive system which is the female sex hormone and helps in the development and maintenance of the reproductive system and female characteristics of the females now this is a very important chart that is given here you know um so for exams you need to remember the the names of the hormones and the secretory gland the secretory gland which uh, you know produces the hormone you need to remember these uh, uh, the gland and the hormone and the function that the gland does along with that you can also remember the disease condition the disease or deficiency condition you know that is found related to these hormones so you can actually learn all these things from this chart this is a very easy um process to learn and uh, filter out the information and help us to remember the information in a tabulated format so all the six hormones are given here okay that we discussed just now all the six hormones are given here so you just need to remember the names of the hormone and the secretion gland that um, from where it is produced and what is the function of the hormone that we just discussed and the disease or the deficiency that is caused relating to that now we'll be discussing about the eight text questions the first question that we have is how does chemical coordination takes place in animals chemical coordination in animals takes place through the hormones secreted by the endocrine glands coordination in animals takes place through the hormone system as well as nervous system which is called the endocrine system so endocrine glands secrete animal hormones directly to the blood uh, since they are ductless glands and hence they secrete the hormone di directly to the blood that reach to the specific sites or the target sites or the target cells now specific type of the molecules are present on the surface of the cells to detect these hormones and these cells act according to the information that a particular hormone gets so this is how you know chemical coordination takes place in animals now the next question that we have is why is uh, what why is the use of iodized salt advised It is, uh, it is advised to use iodized salt because thyroid gland needs iodine to produce thyroxine, right? So thyroxine hormone controls all the metabolic activities of our body, like metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and protein, etc. And um, if we do not take a uh, iodine in proper amount, then there will be the deficiency of thyroxine in our body, and it will cause a disease that we discussed, which was known as Boyle. The next question that we have is how does our body respond when adrenaline is secreted into the blood? Uh, so we already dis uh, um, discussed that adrenaline is a uh, hormone that helps in the production of fight and flight response. So the heart beat increases when the adrenaline is secreted into the blood, so that more oxygen is supplied to our muscles and we can, uh, you know, we can run. And the blood supply to the digestive system and skin also. Yes, because the small arteries around the muscles of these organs contract. This turns the direction of blood towards our skeletal muscles. Uh, the breathing rate also increases uh, due to the contractions of the diaphragm and rib muscles. All these responses enable us to face the situations of fear and anger. So these responses or these changes, you know, in our body, in our blood helps uh, in our body actually. Helps us to uh, show the fight and flight responses. The next and the last question that we have for the, this uh, video is: How are some patients of diabetes treated by giving injections of insulin? So we already talked about the type two diabetes that uh, you know it, it is basically uh, happening due to the irregulation or the malfunction of the hormone regulation, insulin hormone regulation in the body. So insulin hormone regulates blood sugar levels, as we know in the body. And if this is not secreted in proper amounts, the sugar level in the blood rises. This causes many harmful effects. And to treat harmful effects of increased blood uh, um, sugar level, the diabetic patients are treated with uh, insulin injections, right? So in order to replenish the insulin uh, requirement of our body, they are given insulin injections. So that was all about the animal hormones uh, and the endocrine systems of of animal body. Uh, we also talked about the different kinds of hormones, their uh, secretory uh, parts or the glands from where they are secreted, 
the diseases that are attached or related to those hormones and the functions of the hormones. So all these were discussed in the video. Thank you so much.